beep, beep. What is up, ninjas? My name is Sam World. In the previous video, I taught you guys how to make some very funky UK beats like that of the Night Bass label. Now, for that, I referenced a track by MPH called Close Your Eyes, and some of you guys requested that I make a tutorial or a video looking at the sounds. Now, this is going to be my take on it, so it's not 100% there, but I felt like there was a lot of really cool stuff to talk about in order to warrant making this video. That being said, guys, if you want to support the channel, make sure to head over to evilsounds.com where you can find the new Dark Base Volume 2 pack, which is around the same ballpark of this track. A little bit more wubby in the pack for the Night Base guys and the Baseline Banger dudes. But other than that, check it out. And if it's a good fit, best way to support the channel. But that being said, let's get started with this. Now, the first thing we're going to focus on, guys, is that really nasty square bass that is going to be pretty much one of the highlights of the song on the drop, along with, of course, the pluck and the chords. And now we're going to be making this and there's a lot of really cool stuff to talk about. So hearing that sound, if you're trying to become like more adept at sound design, I think it's very important for you to be able to recognize the tone of the sound, what waves you can use to kind of get it. For me, hearing it, I felt like it was a combination of a square and a saw together. And from there, we have to shape the sound. So we're going to be using LFO one in order to do this. So we're going to route it there, there. We want envelope mode on so that way. Uh, the LFO always starts at the same position. From there, we're going to shape this. So we're going to use a filter and run both our oscillators into it. Lower it down. From there, we can kind of decide how far it's going to go to open it. And we're just play around with that. Now, from here, we're going to go basic shapes on this guy and put a saw. Okay. And from there, we're going to kind of use oscillator B more as a layer. And what that means is that the saw is there, but we don't want it to be the main oscillator in this. We want the square to be more heard. Like so, if I get rid of the saw, a little clean square, but now once I introduce the saw, I'm introducing a little bit more of like movement and it gives more of a grittier top end to it. Okay, so from here we have that initial kind of hit, which is going to be like, and then we're going to distort, apply it a, a bit. Now I want this saw more for the grid on the top that we can get there. Okay, so there we go, our first shot. Now, one of the cool things about this bass is what it does. It's a very simple bass, but I always feel like simple sounds are can be made complex with just proper automations. And one of the things that he does, MPH does, in the second part here, we'll say on the fourth. Okay, so we're going to turn on mono legato there. Or else it sounds like a mess. Now, personally, me, he does a pitch bend. But the way I like to program these pitch bends is by using mono legato and then Oh, wait, the portamento to the right. And then that's going to give you a pitch bend, like if you, if you were to go into the MIDI and apply your very own pitch bend, like of sorts, like going here and s somewhat. But I like doing it this way just because I feel like I have a bit more control and I'm lazy. I, I hate inputting dots, but that's just me, okay? You do you. And if you like it that way, that's totally fine. Uh, but we're going to go with that. Now, obviously, one of the things that happens is an automation to the bass where it's increased, having this guy at one, two. And then from there, messing around with the slope. So what I'm going to do is put this slope down to get the first shot right. And from there, I'm going to put a mod on this guy because now you can do that in Ableton. And then we can get this. Okay, there we go. Maybe the, the cutoff shouldn't go that low. And maybe just a bit more to the right. Let's lower the saw a bit more. There we go. Okay, and then from there, let's play with the portamento. Okay, ignore the mixing because this is not a mixing video. <laughs> it's just a recreation. I was trying my best with these sounds, guys. So that's going to be the main sort of sound that we can kind of find. So again, just a combination of a square and a saw. And it gives us that. And then from here, we're just automating this guy. Now, I feel this is super clutch because in Serum, now you can click here, X to the right, and you can kind of mess. So every time you have a shot, you might decide, you know what, I want to be complex. Instead, once, then twice. And then you get like different combinations. But the cool thing about this is that, you know, you can make that drop come to life. If you have one base and you want to make it more interesting, instead of modulating rate and stuff, now you have new ways to modulate the shape of it, which I find is super dope and super, yeah. Now, the pluck on the drop, again, you got to be able to recognize the sound and it's going to be a square. 
Uh, from there, the melody is going to be playing something of sorts. We're in G minor for this track, but there is a bit of change that occurs. Modulations, G, G, D sharp, B, and then down to E. Maybe it's a different one. I don't know, but that's what my ears told me. So I was like, okay, I trust you guys. And I think I'm like a little stuttery on that last part, but it's totally fine. Uh, really not much to talk about. Whenever you're making plucks, let's say that we want to remake this, then again, pick your tone. A lot of plucks are going to be just very simple, not that wave tibbly because they just sound weird, but you can definitely pull it off if needed. From there, we're going to put a bit of release to this guy. And what release is going to do is it's going to make the sound linger. So if I play a note right now, and let's say I put this release really high, you can see how it latches on. So that's what the release does. So what we're going to do is have that on. So in between the notes, the, the pluck itself still has a bit of release. It's like punchy, but you still get a little bit of a tail to it. Okay, so we're just going to decay. Okay, and then just put it in the right octave. Again, very simple sound, and it's just the way that we process it, I feel like, really makes it what it is. So then, because then we're going to have, again, a combination. I feel like, again, sound design, yeah, try to get badass sounds, but I think having a good idea to go with it is also, I think that's the main important thing. <laughs> Damn. Wow. Okay. I mean, you could put OTT on the sound, maybe. <laughs> now you can hear the release a lot more. But what I feel about that plug too is that it. And we can just lower that so it's not as like obnoxious. And let's just get rid of this for now. No, I'm saying get more like it. Okay, ignore the chord stab, but we are gonna talk about it. But it's just that chord shot is too nice, and I I have an idea where it was from, but. Now, when it comes to the chord, guys, this is one of the reasons why I didn't want to make this video. But I thought, you know what, talking a little bit about the movement that occurs with the sound is something that's pretty neat that I feel warrants just making it. OK, so there is a chord stab shot that occurs on the drop, and I'm pretty confident either one an organ based sound or a sampled one shot uh, of a chord stab. So here I'm just utilizing one from the Dark Beast Volume 2 pack. It's not identical but it has the same feel to it not as strong let's just put it that way um and the idea is here that this sound gets turned more unique versus having let's say two shots of the core step doing uh, the way that mph makes it sound a little more interesting and adds more flavor to it is by utilizing an auto filter or a filter based sort of effect to it now there are multiple avenues that you can utilize if you want to like have Let's say you don't know what you want and what terms of movement. Like, for instance, Filter Freak by um, uh, by Soundtoys is really cool. There's going to be two of them, but the first one you can apply that. And there's a lot of really cool rhythmic presets that maybe. And then kind of mess around with. But again, if you just want to take it like simple, we can utilize an auto filter and modulate again that low pass. So we give the sound a little bit more dynamics over just having it do do do. Instead, we can have it kind of have a little bit of a walk. Come down and then again another. I'm just adding a bit of resonance. Let's say if you're lazy and you just want to kind of have something that happens random, we can also use the right side of Ableton, which is the LFO section, to just apply something that's opening the filter up and then play around with it, maybe having a rate of 138. Play around. That one's a little neat, just utilizing the rates over the beat sync. The rate is just kind of setting a hertz rate because LFOs, low frequency oscillators that are being used that we can't really hear, used in analog sense, but they still keep the same terminology in the Ableton. Now, the breakdown of Close Your Eyes by MPH is definitely one out there, and it's accentuated by the chord selection, which then an art place on top with it. So I'm going to show you guys the chords here first, which were made by trial and error. I do understand a little bit of it, but I'll explain where I'm kind of like, I don't get this part. And maybe you guys can help me explain that in the comments down below. OK, guys, so the first chord we're going to have is just the, ba the very basic triad chord, but it's just voiced in a very weird way where we're putting the B up an octave 
and from there the G sharp is coming up and then we have the plus seven of G sharp which again just one two three four five six seven and that's gonna give us the basic triad just voice in a very different way which gives us this sound Okay, now as we move along to the second chord, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like this is going to be a sustained two based chord. Uh, and the reason for that is that, again, we're going to have the third now. So we have one third, which is the B. That's the third note in the scale, and we're utilizing that chord. Uh, and again, another very basic triad. If I bring this D sharp down, we're going to have our three. But what's different now is that we're putting the C sharp, which should be the sus two, and uh, I believe. Uh, which is going to be here but we're putting that up two octaves so that we put it at the very top and it gives us this very eerie vibe so I'll get rid of it okay but that top note there and that's another one and then from there we're going to the second chord which as many of us know is the diminished again plus seven on it now this is where it gets weird for me because the f is just not part of the g sharp minor scale that i'm used to using uh but we're gonna have the a sharp f which is the plus seven again one two three four five six seven and then from there it's just all of these two are put up an octave and then we're just adding a now a c4 which correct me if i'm wrong but i believe now we're gonna be in a major uh, which is sort of like a pitch modulation, which makes it sound a little spacey. From there, the sound design is definitely going to be just, again, sauce. We can maybe add two where we're detuning just a little bit. And then we're going to utilize maybe a filter that's going to open it up with an envelope, a bit of attack. And then not all the way up. And then from here, we can control this guy. Now, there is a bit of sidechain going on with LFO Tool, by the way, and that's what's going to create that vuam, vuam, vuam that you hear in the song. Let's put it maybe like a bit of reverb and maybe some noise. And then this is the hard part where you're trying to get the dynamics right. I think it should be something like that. And then as we move along in the song, the cutoff just tends to open. So now it's going to be. And finally, guys, the last song we're going to be looking at from this track is going to be the beautiful pluck of that place. This really nice art melody. Now, for this, I've decided to use Diva. And the main reason for that is just the ARP has these really cool sort of programming that you can do where you're going to have your sound playing. Now, this is not going to be the same identical, obviously, um, art progression that he has. As that would just take too much damn time just figuring out every note. But we can get something similar. What I've done is just grab the chords and I've just duplicated it down here. And from there, I've turned the ARP on on D.Va. Now, the cool thing here is, is in D.Va, we do have the up and down, which is very standard. But now from there, we do have these octave jumps that we can implement. And then we do have here the round, leap, and repeat that's going to have to deal with how the, the, the octave jumps are going to occur. So, for instance, if I do serial, it's just standard but then i could do a round we could do leaps okay and then again serious Now, the sound itself is going to be sort of FM based. And the way that we're programming in Diva is just utilizing the digital oscillator where I can utilize a pulse and then add a spike up to it. And now let's lower down the octaves as I feel like we're going too high. Let's add a bit of plate reverb. Now from there, I am using the ADS envelope too, but if you wanted to go with an analog or the digital one, the programming is going to be very similar. Uh, th the thing is, we're just going to have 
a bit of attack, some delay, decay, and then high release so that we get a bit of, again, we talked about it in the drop, where like the sound lingers a little longer after you let go. From there, you can play around with opening it up even more. Uh, but that's how we get the sound from there we can also get it with other stuff like maybe utilizing the triangle and a bit of the harmonics now again if you want that release sound just bring it up But again, I utilize Diva at a 116 right here with the up and down, and then we're utilizing the octaves here to get those jumps. I just like the way that it sounds, and I have a feeling this is what he used uh, because it just sounds like Diva's ARP really well. From there, it's just the voicing in the chords. Maybe there's something I missed, or he put them back down to the original where it was before in order to implement those nice octave jumps. But those are going to be some of the sounds in this track. Close your eyes. Hopefully, this helps in any way or form. I know they're not 100% identically there, but again, I wanted to make the video work so hard on trying to make some of these uh, and i hope that again it helps you in any way now if you want to support the channel guys evilsounds.com you know what it's about and i'll catch you guys next time for another video you guys take care and peace out